just cut this piece out. Um, it's the form of the crown for the fore deck. Um, cut out a piece of Douglas fir, marked it out in exactly the same way as the lofting, measured it out from the plans, bang some nails in, drew the curve with a piece of thin wood, cut it and planed it to shape. And now that will play two roles. It will allow me to draw the um, the curve of the top of the various stations to give me the crown for the deck and also it will serve as a mould for laminating up the deck beams later. Yeah and there ladies and gent gentlemen is my first bulkhead. Um, cut it to shape, marked it out by laying it on the lofted lines, run it through the saw with the saw blade down as low as possible that enabled me to cut the curve at the top on the table saw, no trouble. Um, I've laid it on the lines, it fits perfectly. What remains now is just to put some battens around the edge uh, to fit the hull boards too. Um, it needs to be covered in glass cloth and epoxy because uh, the pine ply will check if it's just left like that. But a, a very light cloth on the inside will be fine on the, on the forward end where it may well be an anchor locker in the future. I should put a heavier cloth and epoxy on that side. Inside we'll just have a, a light cloth. Yeah, so I've cut some glass cloth, um, laid it on the on the forward side of the board. This is the thicker glass cloth. It's a four ounce cloth. Um, I cut it a little bit over size. Then I will mix up some epoxy and spread it on there. Smooth it out as best I could. Um, that's what it looks like at the moment. It's not been spread with epoxy yet. Um, let's come in next. I won't be able to film that because I'm here on my own today and uh, there's no way I'm touching this camera when I'm mixing up epoxy or dealing with epoxy or get everywhere and ruin everything. Just turn around over this side. Here's the resin that I'm using. I buy it from a German supplier. Called, um, they've got a website, Sportsbau Bienke. Um, I find it very good to, to deal with. Epoxy is reasonably priced. Um, I've used it in the past, works fine. So I should be mixing that up in a minute. I've got a couple of plastic spreaders, got my raisin and hardener ready. It comes in two different with two different hardeners. I buy the one that has a minimum um, temperature, working temperature of five degrees Celsius. There's a ten degree one as well. Um, yeah, so I'll be mixing up in a minute, spreading it on there, and uh, hopefully it all will go well. Really the the trick is to get it on there with no bubbles, but um, that's easier said than done. In terms of tools that I like to work with, I use this, this um, rubber squidgy here for spreading the epoxy. I use these plastic scrapers, plastic spreaders for mixing up the squidgy for spreading. I've got this roller that's supposed to take the air bubbles out. I'm not overly convinced by it, but um, I do run it over when it's done. Good, so start mixing. Yeah, well, there it is. Covered that. Put quite a nice lot of resin on it. Hopefully, it's completely wetted out. Looks good, can't see any bubbles. Just gonna leave it to dry now. Get out of here. Obviously, wear the old latex rubber gloves when we're doing this job. Um, have to keep it off the skin. I really don't like the smell of the stuff to be honest with you. So, plenty of ventilation and uh, I shall go out of there now and leave it alone. So there it is. I've, uh, I've trimmed up the edges, run around it with, a, with an X-Acto knife to trim the edges up and then I've put the sander on the edges so they're all perfectly flush and straight now and I've just had a very quick sand over the surface as well just to any bumps off it was very windy last night so a couple of little bits of i don't know sticks or something got in it not much but a couple of little bits there you go that's the first bulkhead glass next job is to, to run some battens around the edge so yeah i've put some battens around the around the two sides so far and now um douglas fir battens are made up there 
uh, epoxying to the bulkhead. The uh, deck beam is just laid in position there at the moment, will be glued on later. Um, still got the other side to cover with a light cloth and epoxy of course and beams and um, battens to put around the outside of that. Uh, that's where we are now. Got a delivery, box has arrived from uh, Box Service Pinker. Uh, I haven't opened it yet, we'll find out what's in it. Terry, just coming in and uh, Bought Service Banker, you can be found at that website there. Look, excellent, excellent site for epoxy and glass. They do fiberglass mat, fiberglass cloth, uh, fiberglass roving. They do Aramid or Kevlar, the same things you probably know. Um, and they do carbon fiber, and then they do. Um, Epoxy resins and fillers and all sorts of stuff. Very good site, German site, obviously. So, box has arrived. Let's have a look. What's in here? Let's get in. Okay. Mm. Well, not much. That is a roll of. 25 meters, 25 meters of two ounce glass cloth. And in here should be 2.25 kilograms of hardener and five kilograms of resin. There we go. So now I've got the light cloth, the two ounce cloth, and I can put this is, this is the cloth I'll put on anything inside the boat. So that forward bulkhead that we've put there, that I've put the heavy cloth on the forward side of, I should put the light cloth on the back side of that now. I've covered the other side of that bulkhead now in a very light cloth, in the two ounce cloth with epoxy. Um, still got to trim the edges as you can see. And I put the battens round that make this sort of the other half of the, of the frames. Um, and then that will be that bulkhead basically done. I'll move on to the next station section. Just getting ready to um, glue the battens on the forward bulkhead. And I thought I'd just have a quick word about working with epoxy. Um, so we've got this stuff ready here, ready to mix up. First of all, you see, I have the old blue silicon gloves on. Um, try to keep it off the skin as best possible. Then I've got the, the resin here, the last remnants from this uh, um, tub that I had and the hardener ready. I should mix up a separate uh, plastic spreader for the resin and I've got another one for the hardener. Uh, there it is in the tub. Um, it's important that you use separate um, utensils to mix up. Never, never use the, the hardener one for the resin and vice versa. Keep them separate. I've got two measuring cups there with, with separate spreaders in. One for the resin, one for the hardener. I've got, let's come down here, read that, microfibers from Beanker, um, which I'll put in there to thicken the, the resin up or thicken the, the epoxy mix up to make a, a glue so it doesn't run all over the place. I've got a tub for mixing up and I will certainly be wearing a mask. Um, this is one of the more expensive ones that's supposed to keep vapor out and uh, I wear that for any epoxy mark, uh, work. Um, I'm not a big fan of the fumes. So that's what we do and in a minute I'll measure out the resin and the hardener into those cups. It's roughly a two to one mix. Um, I'll pour it into that one, that tub there, stir it up for about a minute to mix it. I'll add some microfibers to get the thickness that I want. And then I'll use that as a glue to glue my battens onto the bulkhead. And there it is with the uh, other half of the frame battens clamped in place, epoxy in. As soon as the glue is dry there, the clamps will be off obviously. Last sort of sand up and that's the, that's the first bulkhead done. There we go. That's the zero bulkhead of course. Um, next one is the number one frame. Starting soon. Yeah, and when I talk about sanding up, this is this is the sander that I use. It's a, it's a Bosch PEX 220A sander. Comes with a, with a filter on the side there, as you can see. It's one you can use it with one hand. Um, 
marvellous tool. Over the years I've used a number of different Bosch orbital sanders. Um, eventually they wear out, but uh, they're all good. I've always used Bosch orbitals. I'm very pleased with them. Great tool for sanding that woodwork or, or uh, epoxy work or whatever. There you go. The, you know, when the, the sanding pad there um, is Velcroed on, to the backing pad there. The backing pad, the Velcro wears out, and you can change that. That you can get spare ones, fairly expensive, but you can get spare ones to, to, to swap that out. Sometimes the bearings go in there. I know years ago when I was in Turkey, I found that uh, Mercury outboard motor bearings fitted exactly in there, so I replaced a few of the bearings with, with outboard motor bearings. Um, eventually, they give up the ghost, and uh, you have to go out and buy a new one, but they last quite well. Great little tool. So we're working here on the on the number one frame, or the frame that comes at the one station, and I've cut the, the pieces to dimension and length. Um, so I've laminated up the deck beam here and I've cut these to form the frame out of. Um, I can lay them on the loft in lines and I need to, I need to allow the fact that the, the the bow of the boat curves in, so the aft end of this frame is wider than the front end. So I need, need to allow enough to the plane to get the angle. So I allow um, three eighths of an inch um, for that, so that I can get that angle on the way through the plane. So the lady directly onto the lofty lines. Like this. Right, here we go, like that. So I've cut the deck beam, which I can lay roughly in position. Just going to there, you see roughly how it fits. Okay, in this corner here, there's going to be a, a web made out of um, boat corners at the top there. It'll be a web of Douglas fur, which I'll make, which will serve to join the deck beam to the side frame. Um, all of these pieces of wood still need to be sanded up. They will be sanded up and shaped before they're glued together. Um, the side frames will be, will be curved with a spoke shave down to uh, bed level. The bed level I've drawn on the lofty lines, that's the board, that's the, the bottom of the bed, the board for the bed. We've got foam coming on on top of that, so the actual finished bed level will be somewhere around there. Um, these will be curved with a spoke shape down to there, they can stay square below the bed um, so, and then we'll sand up before it's glued up. It's the bottom piece that I've cut here, uh, quick look, Is it there? Good. so that's going to go on there and here there'll be a halving joint, both sides obviously, so that, they, so that this one sits down flush here. So I've just laid it in position, I've marked it out with a pencil. Um, I've used my marking gauge to mark the halving joints. I've set this up, you know how these work, and you just set them up so that the point of the marking gauge comes to the same place from both sides, and you know it's the middle, and then you, you mark a face side, I've marked it here, and you draw the lines around. So, like so, I'll just do it very quickly, but draw the lines around with the marking gauge, shade off the side that's going to be cut away, so you remember which side's going to be cut, and make sure you mark the other half of the, of the, of the halving joint from the right side. So in this case I marked from the cut away side, so for these I need to mark from the side that, that is going to stay, just to make sure it comes out correctly. So I've done the same there, I've run the marking gauge around, I've shaded the bits that will be cut away. So the next job is to cut these halving joints uh, and then make up the web pieces for the corners here, sand and shape the frames, then they can all be glued up with the, um, with the Semproc glue that I showed you in the other video, um, clamped, glued and clamped, and then uh, once the glue's dry just tied it up and that's that frame done. Um, I'm going to put below the bunk, I'm going to put a, a piece of plywood in here, a plywood bulkhead sort of on there which will make the whole thing much more stable uh, and that piece of plywood will be set into there and will be glassed 
both sides with the light cloth. So that's where we are. Next shot I'll show you is of the halving joints cut and of the weddings here cut and, uh, and the frame being glued up. So the, the Start. Here we are, uh, the, the one station frame ready for gluing up. I've already glued the web to the, to the side of the frame on both sides um, and then we're going to assemble the whole thing. We've got slots cut in here for this plywood panel to fit in, slots all the way around. That fits into there. The webs up this end, if you have got that end hosel, the web support the joint between the side frame and the deck beam. Leaf on there. That's that. So it's all set up. We've tried it as a dry run. It fits together. Now we're going to assemble it, glue it. We'll put screws through to hold it in place while the glue is drying, but afterwards the screws will be taken out. Um, as you can see, we're gluing it on the lofted lines, which is nice. Make sure it's exactly the right shape. And uh, I think in the last video I said I would glass this plywood panel, but there's no need to, it's, it's internal. Even if it checks, it doesn't really matter. It's this panel's here to, to reinforce, to keep that shape of the structure, but also to split up the, the storage area under the bunk so that things don't move around when you're at sea. Too much at least. Uh, these side, Frames I've rounded off with a spoke shave between the top of the bunk and, and the web. Both sides, we haven't got any sharp corners there. Nice and smooth. So I say now we'll assemble it, glue it up, and when the glue's dried, final clean up, and that'll be that one done. There it is, glued up. That's the panel in the bottom there, look. Web's at the top. All glued. Once it's dry, give it a run the planer over it, level everything up, and sand, final sand, and that's that one done. Moving on to the number two station next.